I guess Mike just talked a little bit earlier just about maybe you're being smart and instinctive player, you know, knows where to be. How, how do you – where does that come from? Is that from watching film? Is that from repetition? Just where, where do you get to a point where people can count on you and know where you are? Yeah, I think that's just uh, – I think mostly repetition and then just continuing to, uh, you know, have dialogue between, you know, yourself – coaches and, and the quarterback and just making sure everyone's on the same page and there's no there's no gray area you know we always make sure going into a game if, if Ryan wants me in a certain spot I get certain looks you know I know exactly where that that is so um, just being on the same page with the quarterbacks and and clearing it with the coaches and you know everybody being on the same page is, is really where that comes from and you're certainly very active you know in the opener is that kind of result maybe of your your chemistry with with Ryan comfortable being comfortable in the offense maybe a carryover from from what you did last season yeah I mean who knows I mean it's you know whenever the you know um situation presents itself you know for me to get in and and to uh you know help our offense you know I'm going to do the best I can whenever I can so um I was able to get in and and uh you know help move the chains on a couple plays and um you know the two-minute drive was big so um you know, it was good to get in there and contribute. And, uh, you know, obviously getting a win was the most important thing. So it was great to, to leave Denver with a win. Uh, Luke? Adam, as someone that suffered an, a pretty significant injury last year, as you tried to develop consistency as a player, how much can an injury derail that? And when you're ultimately healthy again, what do you have to do to sort of get back in that mode of being consistent? Yeah, I think the biggest thing uh, when you do go through an injury that takes you out for that l long a period of time is uh, continuing to keep your mind in the game when you're when you're out. Um, it's really easy for for people to uh, you know kind of get kind of get lost in in the you know the rehab mode and waking up early and, and treatment and you know you're not playing so you kind of kind of lose your focus um, at times. But the biggest thing you know if you're missing week to week to, to week just staying locked in and meetings and, and, and seeing where our offense is changing from week to week and continue to keep your mind in, in football mode and, and, and coming to work every day to get better. And, um, you know, the when you do get back, it's not such a huge, um, you know, change of pace for you. Mike said that when a player develops consistency, it, it really comes not necessarily on the field, but in their practice routine and all of that stuff. As sort of the veteran of this receiver group, over the last two years, what does Corey Davis' routine look like in terms of him and, and his approach to consistency? Yeah, I mean, Corey is, is working his tail off every day at practice. You know, whenever he's healthy and he's out there and, and he's working, um, man, he, he puts he puts in the work. And, um, you know, that's the beautiful thing about our practices is, is they're just as hard, if not harder, than some of our games. And, and Corey's, you know, out there grinding and um, – you know, it, it clears up the picture for him when he when he steps on the, the field on game day, knowing that he's he's grinding in practice every single day, and, and you know he's he's paid his dues, and uh, you know that showed last last Monday. Uh, Teresa, Adam, having been around uh, Mike Vrabel now for a year and a weird off season, what is he like as a head coach uh, that makes it fun to to play for him as a player? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the biggest thing with him is, you know, he he's going to treat you the way you treat the team. And, um, you know, uh, every every guy on our team, for the most part, respects our team, comes to work every day and and, uh, and shows up ready to work. And, um, you know, he respects that. You know, as a former player, I think he knows what we go through, um, you know, the toll that it takes on our body, and he understands that as well. So, um, you know, it's been it's been fun, you know, playing for him and as we continue to grow and, and um, you know, um, be on the same team together. It's, it's, it's been fun to see our, our team as a whole come together and, and buy into to his vision. Uh, Terry? Adam, uh, news came down a little while ago that fans are going to be allowed back into Nissan Stadium on a limited basis. Uh, what's your take on that, and what was it like playing with no fans in the stands uh, Monday night? Yeah, it's, it's certainly different. Um, you know, there are times where it's you can hear a pin drop um, on, on during that Monday night game, and you kind of look around and you just you're just thinking, man, this is this is the this is the NFL. This is you know a tie ball game, you know, and, and, a, and a crucial Monday night football opener, um, and, and there's there's not a noise in the stands. So it was definitely different and uh, and weird, but you know, it's all it'll be 
that's that's awesome news that we're able to have you know a few fans in in uh, Nissan Stadium and you know excited to uh, to open up at home and, and hopefully have a good one for our fans. Uh, John Gunner. Yeah, Adam, uh, without any preseason games this year, we hadn't really gotten to see much about uh, uh, Nick Westbrook um, outside of just practices. Just wondering if you could offer some thoughts on him and, and uh, you know, maybe what um, uh, led to his call up uh, to the 53. What's he what's he bring? Yeah, no, my, my initial thoughts on, on Nick were, you know, as soon as he walked in the building, he looked like an NFL receiver, um, you know, obviously size and I, you know, all, all the measurables are there, um, but just in terms of his approach, um, you know, to, to training camp and, you know, he was, you know, all the rookies were throwing a curveball and not being able to show up for OTAs and, you know, really have to um, to grind out that training camp to try and make a team. And, you know, he showed up and didn't complain and, you know, the ups and downs of, of training camp, the adversity, you know, he, he didn't flinch. And, um, you know, I'm excited for to see him uh, take advantage of this opportunity. Uh, David Clark. Adam, you talk about moving the chains, and you're a guy, you know, you're usually working pretty close to the sticks. Do you actually sort of keep one eye on where the first down marker is, or is it more a sense of just knowing where you have to be most times? No, uh, you know, as an offense, we do a good job of communicating in the huddle. Um, you know, if, if we're coming in and switching personnel, you know, everyone's kind of yelling out, you know, hey, it's third and six, third and seven, you know, whatever. Whatever we need to get, I think everyone's on the same page of, of where we need to get to yard line wise. So um, we all do a great job of, uh, you know, keeping that in the back of our minds. But do you know, like, if, I mean, does a six yard route feel different than a seven yard route, for example? I mean, is there is there something you consciously have to do then in that situation? Yeah, you know, each and every route, you know, we, we rep it so much in practice and, 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 and walk throughs and jog throughs and and, and everything that we do. Um, there, there is a certain timing in my head that goes off. Um, I'm not necessarily counting every single yard, every single step. You know, it's, it's more of a, you know, you have a feel when you get to, to where you need to get.